Good evening, everyone. I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey. And in today's video, we will be going over how to read and analyze pedigrees one on one. So let's do this. Boom. Let's go ahead and dive in. What is a pedigree? A pedigree is a chart that visually details a family history or the transmission of a specific trait. But let's go ahead and first look at the specific parts of a pedigree. So first, if you notice, a female is going to be identified by a circle. A male is going to be a square. An individual affected with a certain trait is actually going to be shaded in, so it can be a shaded in square or it can be a shaded in circle. Now, it's also important to know that an individual who is a carrier for a certain trait is going to be half shaded in. So this right here, this is a circle, and I know my circle is ugly, but this represents a female who is a carrier for a certain trait. And the same thing can be said for a male as well. So we got a square right here and it's half shaded in, this is going to represent a male who is a carrier for a certain trait. An individual who is dead or deceased is going to be a circle or a square with a line drawn through it. And then this represents twins. Notice that they come from this one point right here and then they branch off right here. An individual that is adopted is going to actually have these brackets around them. And then if a woman has a miscarriage, it's going to be represented by a triangle. So now let's go ahead and take a look at these other parts. So let's look at our marriage line. So if you notice, here's this line right here, and this represents a mother and a father who is who are married, or more importantly, a mother and father who have kids to children. And here's this line of descent right here. So this is the line of descent that goes down to the children. And if you notice this mother and father, they had a son and they had a daughter. And then if we take a look, here's our sibling line right here. So this shows that they're connected right here as siblings or brother and sister. And then if you look on the left-hand side, these lines or these numbers or these Roman numerals represent our generation number. So if you notice, mom and dad represent generation one, and then the brother and the sister they represent generation two or their second generation. And that's pretty much the basics of pedigrees. What are pedigrees used for? Pedigrees can be important tools in determining patterns of inheritance of specific traits. And pedigrees are used by genetic counselors to help couples to decide to have children when there is evidence of a genetically inherited disorder in one or both families. And this is why they say be careful who you have children with. And then they are also used to determine the predisposition of someone to carry a hereditary disease. So let's look at a couple of examples. So first, let's look at hemophilia. And this is where blood doesn't clot normally because it lacks sufficient blood clotting proteins. And people that are known as hemophiliacs are often called free bleeders because it's difficult for their blood to clot or to I stop like bleeding. Yourself. And then in Huntington's disease, this is a fatal disorder that causes the progressive breakdown of nerve cells in the brain. And then we also have cystic fibrosis, which is progressive genetic disease that causes persistent lung infections and limits the ability to breathe over time. So let's take a look at one of these examples and let's look at the pedigree for cystic fibrosis. If you notice in the Roberts family, the mom and the dad, so Ann and Bill are carriers for cystic fibrosis. And the way we can tell is because both of them have are half shaded in. And if you notice, in the Carson family, Dan is a carrier for cystic fibrosis, but his wife, Karen, is not. So if we look at their children, they have a normal son, they have a normal daughter, but then they have a son who is a carrier for cystic fibrosis. So Ken is a carrier. If we look in the Roberts family, they have a normal daughter, another normal daughter, but if you notice that Barbie is also a carrier for cystic fibrosis. So just to clarify, since they're carriers, this doesn't mean that they have cystic fibrosis, but this does mean that they can pass it on to their offspring. So if we notice when Barbie and Ken mate and they have offspring, and when they have this, their daughter, their daughter Sally actually does have cystic fibrosis. Barbie and Ken are both carriers, so they've increased the likelihood that Sally has cystic fibrosis. Now it's time for your check for understanding. And you're going to use the pedigree chart below to answer the following questions. You may use a letter label more than once. Go ahead and take about two minutes to answer the following questions on pedigrees, and you can go ahead and pause the video now. 
Hey everyone, we're back. And I know that your check for understanding went great. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we use pedigrees in order to determine genotypes. And we'll take a look at that cystic fibrosis example again. So in order to have cystic fibrosis, you must inherit two copies of the cystic fibrosis gene that contain mutations. One copy from your mom and one copy from your dad. That means that each parent must either have cystic fibrosis or be a carrier of a cystic fibrosis gene mutation. So let's go ahead and clarify. So in order to determine the genotype, let's go ahead and identify that big C and this is going to be an individual that's normal. So two big C's is gonna represent normal. But then if you notice that small C is gonna represent that an individual is either a carrier or two small C's together is gonna represent an individual actually has cystic fibrosis. So if we look at this example on the left, when two people who are carriers have a child, there's a 25% chance of having a child with cystic fibrosis. So if this woman is a carrier, she's gonna have a big C and a small C. If this man is a carrier, he's gonna have a big C and a small C. So let's go ahead and do a Punnett square on both of them. So we have a big C, small C for the dad, big C, small C for the mom. Notice this first one is gonna have two big C's, so it's gonna be normal. This second one is gonna have a big C and a small C, that's, so that's gonna be a carrier. This third one is gonna have a big C and a small C, so that's gonna be another carrier. But then if you look at this fourth one, this is actually has two small C's, so this lets us know that this individual has cystic fibrosis. So let's just take a look. If this individual has cystic fibrosis, the genotype is gonna be two small C's. If this female is a carrier, it's gonna have a big C and a small C. If this male is a carrier, it's gonna have a big C and a small C. And if this female is not a carrier, she's gonna have two big C's because she's going to be normal. So ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do on this on this example on the right hand side is that I want you to take about one or two minutes to actually make the genotypes or predict the genotypes for these individuals and their offspring by using this example that I made up here over on the left hand side. And I want you to go ahead and take that minute or two and you can go ahead and pause the video now. Now it's time for another check for understanding. And you're going to use the information below in the following letter labeled pedigree to determine and write the genotype of the shown individuals. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and take about one or two minutes to do so, and you can go ahead and pause the video now. Now let's take a look at our autosomal versus sex-linked inheritance. So let's go ahead and start off by looking at this T-chart versus for autosomal versus sex-linked. And you notice autosomal is a pattern of inheritance in which the transmission of traits depends on the genes and the autosomal. So that's going to be, and like we said in the carrier types earlier, that's going to be pairs one through 22. But in a sex-linked inheritance, the transmission of traits depends on the genes in the sex chromosome. So that's going to be that 23rd pair on that karyotype. In autosomal inheritance, it can skip generations if it's autosomal recessive. But in sex-linked inheritance, it does not skip generations. And then autosomal inheritance exhibits Mendelian inheritance patterns. So it follows a set pattern. But in sex-linked inheritance, it exhibits crisscross inheritance. So for example, um, a trait can be passed from mom to son or father to daughter. And then the autosomal inheritance, autosomal traits equally affect both sexes. So it can affect males and females equally. But then in sex-linked inheritance, X-linked traits often affect male individuals. Once again, males don't carry the X, extra X chromosome. And then in autosomal inheritance, male-to-male -male transmission can occur, so it can be passed on from father to son. And then in sex-linked inheritance, male-to-male -male transmission does not occur, so it can't be or it does not pass on from father to son. Then some examples of autosomal inheritance include widow's peak and hitchhiker's thumb, while examples of sex-linked inheritance includes hemophilia, baldness, and colorblindness. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two examples. So let's look at this pedigree one right here. Notice that almost males and females are equally affected, but the biggest thing I noticed right here is that it actually skipped this generation. So this lets me know that it is autosomal inheritance and more specifically, it's going to be autosomal recessive inheritance. So I put a REC right here to signify autosomal recessive. But if we look at pedigree two, notice that it goes from every generation and it affects exclusively, almost exclusively the males. And it does not skip a generation. So this is gonna be that sex-linked inheritance or probably more importantly, that X-linked inheritance. 
Let's go ahead and do some more reading and analyzing pedigrees practice. And you're going to work with a partner or two to read and analyze the following pedigree above right here and answer the following questions related to the pedigree. And you can go ahead and take about three or four minutes in your groups and answer the following questions. And you can go ahead and pause the video now. Now it's time for your final check for understanding. You may use the information below and the following letter label pedigree to determine and write the genotype of the shown individuals. I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Chavis Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, check out our curriculum and instruction website at www.fathersoninnovations.com. And also, check out our brand new online courses site at www.fathersoninnovations.com forward slash courses. And this is where we actually have online courses that are designed and developed to help kids be proficient and distinguished on the Georgia milestones. And lastly, if you haven't already, go into the Google Play Store or the Apple Store and download our app. And our app name is FSI Courses. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed the video and got a lot out of it. We love you and we care about you and make sure that you all have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace. Peace.